Hello everyone, welcome back. So, we are in the 10th module and this is our first lecture. So, 10th module lecture 1. Now, today we are going to learn um, uh, response due to support motion. So, we have a MDOF system and uh, earlier uh, we solved similar problem for SDOF system, but today we will see how we can uh, find out the response of a MDOF system when we have the support motion of the system is given. So, let us consider three stories. So, the mass at each level are defined as m 1, m 2, m 3 and then collective lateral stiffness uh, k 1 for story 1 and damping c 1. Similarly, story 2 has k 2, c 2 and story 3 has k 3, c 3 and the degrees of freedom is x 1, x 2. X 3 and the support motion is given. So, X g double dot of t that is the ground acceleration due to earthquake is given g stands for ground and for this problem recall for SDOP system we have already discussed how to derive the equation of motion in absolute terms and relative terms. So, if we assume that x of t is the absolute deformation then y of t or maybe u of t is the relative deformation with respect to ground. Then in terms of relative displacement if we write the equation of motion is m u double dot plus c u dot plus k u is equal to m times some influence vector times x g double dot of t. So, what is the dimension of m? This is n cross n in our case in this problem n equal to 3. So, what will be the influence vector? that is in our problem it will be minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 So, our problem it is again n cross 1 n equal to 3. Now, how to derive this equation of motion again we have already uh, solve the same problem for SDOP system. So, you just uh, draw the free body diagram and then uh, satisfy equilibrium condition and you will get it. So, that is a small home task, but the point here is that we have the equation of motion where on the right hand side we have this is the ground acceleration that we record and then multiply that with 
obviously mass times acceleration is the force, but we have to calculate the force at each story. So, this is the expression for forcing function. So, the question is how to solve this problem. Now, there are two options. The first one is again modal decomposition. And the second one is numerical integration. So, both of them will study first modal decomposition. So, for that again u is the relative deformation that is coupled. So, in this coordinate system u the equation of motions are coupled. So, for decoupling what we will propose u equal to phi times z then phi transpose m phi z double dot plus phi transpose c phi z dot plus phi transpose k phi is equal to phi transpose m l x g double dot of t. And on the left hand side, if this is mass normalized, so what we have i times z double dot plus 2 i theta n omega n z dot plus omega n square z is equal to phi transpose m l x g double dot of t. So, that is the equation of motion and this is a decoupled set. So, we can solve z n of t and that we can easily find out using say Duhamel integral and then from there we can find out what is x of t or in our case it is u of t actually. And from u of t we again if required we can find out x of t which is the absolute deformation. So, that is the steps that we are going to follow to solve the numerical example. Now, uh, let us consider an example. So, we will solve a thread up system So, now we have to define the parameters of this system. So, that I will uh, mention in a minute. Um, we have m 1, m 2, m 3. So, m 1 equal to m 2 equal to m 3 is equal to 10 kg. Then k 1, k 2, k 3, c 1, c 2, c 3. So, k 1 is equal to 1 2 0 0 Newton per meter, k 2 is equal to 1 5 0 0 Newton per meter, 
and k 3 is equal to again 1 2 0 0 Newton per meter and eta 1 is equal to 2 percent is equal to eta 2. So, that is the problem statement and then we have uh, the support motion. So, x g double dot of t is defined by L central uh, ground motion L central ground motion. So, let us solve this problem. So, what we will do? We will first solve using modal decomposition number 1 modal decomposition and then we will find out response using modal superposition and then we will also use Wilson theta algorithm. So, these are the two algorithm that we are going to use now. So, for that let us have the code. Now, so the previous lecture showed you how to develop the code for MDOF system. Now, you can easily recall this code. So, we have defined mass and that is 10 kilogram in all three degrees of freedom. So, that is defined then k 1, k 2, k 3 they are also defined as you can see and then uh, we define the mass matrix then stiffness matrix here and then once we do that we do eigen analysis find out natural frequency which is the square root of the diagonal and then the phi also defined then phi transpose m phi that we check and then uh, we find out the damping matrix when we define the damping in first two modes. So, in our case it is 2 percent. So, let us do it for 2 percent. So, we calculate alpha and beta that is the mass and stiffness proportionality constant. Then based on that we find out C d and then uh, we can also find out eta n that is uh, the critical damping ratio in H mode. So, phi transpose C phi now will be a diagonal matrix and from there we calculate. Then we define influence uh, vector which is minus 1 I have already explained and that also you can derive. Then we have to define the forcing function. So, f is m times as you can see on your screen m times the influence vector which is minus 1 and then uh, if you recall the equation. So, you can see here. So, we have on the right hand side phi transpose m influence vector times x g double dot of t. So, that is what we do here in this line. So, we multiply f which is mass times influence vector with phi transpose and that is what we call f n and then we start the loop. For that again we initialize z n that is the model solution and then we call the Duhamel integral where obviously in this case mass will be 1 then stiffness will be omega n square and then eta n we have just calculated. Then uh, we uh, provide the time and then also the forcing function which is f n times x g double dot of t. And then uh, we solve for every mode we have altogether three modes here in this case. So, we solve it for i equal to 1 to 3 and then uh, we multiply this z n that is the modal solution vector with phi and then we get the response. So, that is the uh, solution. Now, here again I use x, but actually in our this problem it is phi that we have used. So, in this problem we have u 
uh, and x is actually the absolute deformation, but here in the code uh, in place of u we use x. So, that is the total uh, solution. So, let us run this and here you can see on your screen we have the response along floor 1, floor 2, floor 3 and as expected the top floor, topmost floor that is x 3 will have maximum response and that is precisely what you can see. So, floor 1 has minimum uh, response compared to floor 2 and then maximum response is there at floor 3. So, that clearly shows how we can use modal superposition to find out the response of a structure when it is excited by random support motion. In this case, uh, arbitrary support motion uh, we should call it because we have only the time points of the input ground acceleration is defined and based on that we find out this response. Now, we have another way to solve the same problem. So, what we do? We copy this Wilson theta function file and then using that uh, we will also solve uh, this problem. So, what we do? We copy this and then after we solve through modal superposition, then we solve using Wilson theta. So, for that we need to define initial conditions. So, x naught and that is the 0 0 initial condition and then also we have to define the force. So, for that we have this f is defined. So, f of t is f times we have x g double dot of t ok. So, after the solution again let us plot them. So, let us run the code and here you can see we have two different ways we have solved and both of them are giving exactly same result. So, in one case the first one figure 1 here we have solved the problem using uh, modal superposition and then the next one is using Wilson theta. Let us uh, compare. So, if we take the third flow response and then plot one on top of other then we can compare the response we get. For that let us just copy this so this will be x of t
So, the first solution using modal superposition and the second one is using Wilson theta. So, here you see the comparison and uh, you see there is a point by point match uh, between the two response. Uh, we obtain one from modal superposition and another from Wilson theta and that clearly shows you how both of them uh, can provide you the accurate result either way you can solve it and both of them are uh, quite accurate. So, that you can use for response characterization. Now, uh, again once you solve the response at different floor level like in this case uh, we have solved x 1, x 2 and x 3 uh, and the solution is here. So, now once we do that then we can calculate the shear force acting at each floor and then also we can calculate the bending moment at the base and the base shear that is the um, design parameter we use uh, when we design this columns. Okay. So, once we solve the displacement completely then from displacement we can find out strain and from there we can also find out stresses which are essential for our design purpose. So, that clearly shows you how to solve a structural system when we have excitation from support. Right. So, uh, this is again the displacement uh, at each floor level. So, we can also calculate what is the acceleration at each floor level. So, that actually defines the level of comfort for the occupants at different floor level. So, next what we will do for this same excitation which is L central ground motion, we have already solved response spectrum. So, in our next class we will solve the same problem using response spectrum and we will find out the peak response that we can obtain from this time history response. Thank you very much. Thank you.